Whenever you're changing your diet or whenever you're doing any kind of new protocol, it's important to keep close tabs on your vitamin and mineral content. And today I want to talk about mega dosing vitamin C through a proper strategy. Okay. Now I'm not saying that you need to go out and take massive amounts of vitamin C, but what I do want to do is explain how vitamin C is created in the body in most animals and how it's not created in humans. And if you understand this process and you understand the enzymatic process in which vitamin C is created, it gives you a better understanding of how you may want to be potentially supplementing vitamin C. Now, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button on my channel. And also, if you haven't already, turn on notifications so you can make sure you know whenever I go live or whenever I post a new video. So let's get straight down to the facts and how the body works. Most people think of vitamin C as this immune boosting vitamin or supplement that you take to help prevent you from getting sick. But the reality is it's more than that. It's an electron donor. And what I mean by that is vitamin C, also known as absorbic acid, has an extra electron that it has an ability to donate over to free radicals within the body to ultimately neutralize them. You see, free radicals are the oxidative stress that is running around through your body. Okay? When we have vitamin C in the equation, we have this extra electron that can be donated over to a free radical to ultimately render it useless, meaning we can stop those free radicals right in their tracks. Here's the interesting thing. Animals have a natural ability to create vitamin C. Humans do not. You see, animals create vitamin C or absorbic acid in their livers through the combination of four different enzymes. And what happens is when they're under stress or when they're under any kind of interesting situation where they have to have a big surge of vitamin C to combat free radicals, their body will create more. If an animal is under stress, its liver or kidneys creates more vitamin C to ultimately combat it. So we have sort of this evolutionary proof that vitamin C does have an effect on neutralizing bad things within the body. The problem is humans lack the ability to create that vitamin C. If you look back at the old times, we look back at the Mayflower and Christopher Columbus and all that stuff, people contracted scurvy. Well, the way they contracted it was because it was a deficiency in vitamin C because they weren't able to get it from exogenous sources. They weren't able to eat fruits and veggies when they were on ships. So therefore, they became vitamin C deficient because their bodies couldn't synthesize it and manufacture it on their own. Now, we're running into a similar situation because a lot of our fruits and vegetables are void of the nutrients that we need to get adequate amounts of vitamin C. So, of course, we take vitamin C supplements. No big deal, right? But then that leads us into megadosing vitamin C. Because a lot of people have been asking me, vitamin C, can we take it in megadoses to ultimately combat cancer, to ultimately combat illness? And what is the effect of taking it in extreme doses? Well, we have to take a look again at how it works in the animal world. You see, in the animal world, their livers are going to produce enough vitamin C to combat a stressful situation that is ebbing and flowing throughout the course of the day. Meaning, they might have a baseline level of azoric acid that they're making, then they get stressed out, so their body creates more. Humans, we have to rely on taking it exogenously. And it's all because we lack that enzyme known as galonolactone oxidase. Without galonolactone oxidase, we cannot create vitamin C. So if we take massive amounts of vitamin C at one point in time, we are basically simulating an animal only creating extra vitamin C at one point in time. When in reality, we need to be able to have surges of vitamin C throughout the course of the day. So megadosing is kind of misunderstood. You don't want to be taking two or 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C just in one serving because your body's just going to excrete a lot of it no matter how you take it in. But if you continually take it throughout the course of the day, morning, afternoon, evening, and megadose in that style, still reaching that two to 3,000 milligrams per day tolerable upper intake level, that's going to get you a lot better of a response because then your vitamin C levels are going to be elevated throughout the course of the day in an even fashion because you cannot predict when you're going to be stressed out all the time. You can't just take a large amount of vitamin C because you're anticipating being stressed out. We have to mimic what would happen in the animal world. We get stressed out, vitamin C surges naturally. So if we can constantly keep our vitamin C levels slightly elevated and not mega dose at one point in the day, we can be in a lot better of a situation and be in a lot better of a natural response to stress, allowing vitamin C to truly do its job when it comes down to fighting free radicals. So as always, if you have ideas for future videos, if you wanna know about the dosaging of a certain supplement or if you wanna know about what kind of foods to eat in a given situation, put them down in the comment section below because we spend all day researching these kinds of things to bring the best content to you. So as always, keep it locked in here and I will see you in the next video.